Live from Quito, Ecuador, I'm Sweeney Gray and this is from the South, a daily news brief from Tell Us Your English. And we start this new edition right now. This weekend in Venezuela, governors, mayors, social movements, and ordinary citizens began a series of debates to draw up the Bolivarian Revolution's governmental plan for 2019 to 2025. The public consultation comes in response to President Nicolas Maduro's invitation on New Year's Eve for everyone to get involved in developing a grassroots national plan. A day to sketch out the new Venezuela shoulder to shoulder from the bottom up. It's an opportunity for all of us to take part in this big proposal towards the national plan for 2019. For us, it's a matter of pride to take part because we can develop our ideas, all the proposals we want, and continue with the legacy of Hugo Chavez. A public consultation to develop the next governmental plan. The starting point for the discussions is the national plan inherited from Commander Chavez, the route map of the revolution. There is only one national plan, the Plan de la Patria, put forward by Hugo Chavez, with its five historic objectives and 123 specific national and general goals. We need to update this plan to fit today's conditions in Venezuela. To my mind, two fundamental things should be the priorities. First, the economy, how we manage it to benefit the people, how we bring imper inflation under control, organize distribution, and boost the production of goods that we need. Secondly, and this is a guarantee of the continuity of the Bolivarian process, is how we secure the unity of our people, unity within the Chavista movement, and more broadly, unity of the Venezuelan people to successfully confront North American imperialism. This is the first of several rounds of debates that will continue until February throughout the country. What we're doing here is reorganizing our support because we're facing an imperial offensive and we're developing a grassroots, patriotic, Venezuelan, counteroffensive, and we hope this can inspire the rest of our America. There will be consultations by region and by sector, as well as special topics where citizens can present their contributions. These will feed into the collective drawing up of the governmental plan, an unprecedented, an unprecedented process that consolidates Venezuela's participatory democracy. On Friday, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro closed the country's borders with Aruba, Curaçao and Bonaire for 72 hours. Maduro took the action to prevent smuggling. He also accused the islands of not taking enough steps to prevent the contraband which was affecting Venezuela's strategic interests. I've ordered the immediate taking over of all ports and airports through which we communicate and have commercial and passenger exchange with Aruba, Curaçao and Bonaire. So I am announcing that, as of today and for 72 hours, we are closing all air and sea communication with Aruba, Curaçao and Bonaire to establish a restructuring and defense of Venezuela's economic interests. The opposition alliance in Honduras has restarted its protests against fraud in November's election. Thousands took to the streets in the country's second city, San Pedro Sula, on Saturday. The opposition says it won't recognize the re-election of President Juan Orlando Hernandez. Instead, it intends to swing its own candidate, Salvador Nasrallah, in the streets later this month. He will have about 80% of people in the country against him. People who come from other countries will be met with a surprise. As a recommendation, do not come to Honduras. Do you think people will continue taking to the street? There's a certainty. The presidential sash will be placed on me in the streets, in one of the cities, either Tegucigalpa or San Pedro Sula. 
What if there are more dead and injured? Violence was created by Juan Orlando Hernández because he is against the popular will of the people. When there is violence, when decisions are taken, such as fraud in the electoral tribunal, the people complain and he himself is killing people. He has already killed 36 people. Campaigning is underway in Ecuador for the referendum on February 4th, which could block the re-election of politicians, including the former president, Rafael Correa. Thousands turned up in Monte Cristi on Saturday as Correa began his campaign for a no votes in the referendum. The former leader and his supporters say the constitution, the consultation is unconstitutional and are accusing the current president, Lenin Moreno, of betraying Ecuador's citizen revolution. We could be rich, poor, leftist, right wing, black, white, from the coast, from the mountains. But if there's something that unites Ecuadorians, if there's something that unites Latin Americans, if there's something that unites the people of Manabí, who have suffered through these scenarios, is we hate betrayal, which is the worst of wretchedness of mankind. So our vote must also be a vote to reject traitors. That's why we can say no seven times. Seven times no. On Saturday, Ecuador's National Assembly saw in Maria Alejandra Vicuña as the new vice president. She replaces Jorge Glass, who has been sentenced to six years in prison over his alleged connections to the Odebrecht corruption case. Vicuña has been acting as vice president since Glass was jailed. Supporters of Rafael Correa says his trial was political and boycotted the session that confirmed Vicuña. We will never betray the trust that the people have placed in us through the most powerful instrument the citizen has, which is our democracy. Support at the polls for a political project that has achieved deep transformations and is projected towards the future for everyone's benefit. In March, the term of the president of Trinidad and Tobago, Anthony Carmona, will come to an end. His appointment will not be renewed, and after a meeting with the opposition on Friday morning, the government has announced that they have, they have selected a woman as their nominee for the President of the Republic. This government's nominee for election to the President of Trinidad and Tobago is Madam Justice Paula Mee Weeks. Madam Justice Paula Mee Weeks, as I'm sure the population would be aware, has had a sterling, stellar career as a jurist in Trinidad and Tobago, rising to the highest level, which is the Court of Appeal in Trinidad and Tobago, where she served for approximately 11 years as a Court of Appeal judge. She started her schooling at Bishop's Anstey. I've been told that that must be made aware to the public of Trinidad and Tobago by the proud alumni of Bishop's Anstey. And then she went on to the University of West Indies. We'll be back very soon. Stay with us. Welcome back. Delegations from the Colombian government and the ELN guerrillas are traveling to Ecuador this Monday for another round of peace talks just one day before the bilateral ceasefire between the two sides expires. Several civil society sectors have asked the two sides to extend the ceasefire. More details in the next report. University professor Victor de Curria Lugo is one of the hundreds of Colombians that signed a letter addressed to President Juan Manuel Santos and the ELN leader, Nicolás Rodríguez Bautista. The letter asked the leaders to maintain the ceasefire during the peace dialogue. Negotiating in the middle of the war is dangerous, but it's even more dangerous to discard a ceasefire that required so much effort, which is the first in 26 years of talks between the government and the ELN, and it has shown real efficiency to the communities. Today we are receiving messages from people of Arauca, Catatumbo, Cauca, campesinos, African-American and indigenous people who want an extension of the ceasefire. 
during the bilateral ceasefire between the ELN and the Colombian state, there have been difficulties. However, the benefits of this are measured in the lives that have been saved. The peacemaker Carlos Belanda points out that in three months of ceasefire, 90 Colombian lives were saved and 400 others were saved from being harmed. So that is why he also signed a letter from the civil society. The death of a policeman, the death of a soldier, or the death of a guerrilla doesn't make too much of a difference in the balance of 53 years of war, but it does bring pain to the families and the communities of these people, so we should avoid unnecessary pain. These requests also come from the regions. In the last hours, the Compass communities warned that 12 families were forcibly displaced from the Guijo Mando and Curvarado territories in Chocó due to combats between ELN and Gaitani's auto-defense paramilitaries. People declare that it is urgent to extend the ceasefire and to dissemble paramilitarianism. Uncertainty still remains in the Colombian people. They expect that the ELN and the national government will be able to overcome the difficulties to maintain the peace. In Argentina, several human rights organizations and political movements have denounced the persecutor, persecution of members of the Workers' Party who took part in protests against the government's pension reform. Carolina Silvestri in Buenos Aires has this report. Members of the Workers' Party have announced a protest against the jailing of two members and the possible detention of a third during the marches to reject pension reforms. We will march all in Argentina against this detention and to demand that Cesar Aracaki is freed. We stand against these reforms. Police search the institutions that fired the workers, search the state and the municipal administration. They protect the measures that are benefiting the banks in the country. They also denounce Mauricio Macri's government for using the justice system and the police force to repress social protests, violating the rights of the people, such as leader Cesar Aracaki, who remains in prison. I want to denounce the treatment that my comrade has received in jail. I am asking the media to publish this so Argentina is not misled by the government of Mauricio Macri and his accomplices. Another member, Lorena Caceres, says Sebastian Romero hasn't communicated at all since he was first detained. We have seen a media campaign to show him as a violent person when in reality he's a symbol of the workers' fight. Political leader Marcelo Ramal has said that all those who have been detained are political prisoners of Macri's administration. The judge behind the case is saying that this was a violent action. The political fight has been ignored regarding what happened in the protest on December 18th. The leaders are standing against the fact that the law is being used to persecute anyone opposed to the government. Eleven people have died after residents of a small Mexican town and members of a self-appointed community police force had a gunfight on Sunday. According to state officials, the gun battle occurred on the outskirts of a seaside resort in Acapulco. The incident took place after the community police detained a young man for disorderly conduct during town festivities. Eight local residents were killed in the gun battle, while three members of the community police were shot dead by state police after resisting arrest. During the clashes, there is a number of eight people, plus another three people killed, bringing it up to 11 people dead. That is the information we have at this time. Also, at the time of the arrest by the state police, they found 580 doses of marijuana being carried by members of the community police. And rising energy prices are affecting the price of tortillas in Mexico, a basic item in Mexicans' daily diet. Producers are complaining that they have no support from the government in facing a situation that has caused the closure of a number of producers. More details in the following report. The rise in tortilla prices has been registered during the first days of 2018 and is worrying merchants like Paloma Galindo, who has had to adjust the prices of her tacos accordingly. We are going to lose clients. I make my tacos with nopales, with potatoes, so they are more filling, but people will still rather they were cheaper. Producers of one of Mexico's essential ingredients are complaining about the rising prices of goods such as LP gas. 
which rose in between 21.7 and 47% in 2017 alone, according to the Energy Regulatory Commission. Our sales have decreased by about 40%. We have been affected by rising prices. People have told us they will stop eating tortillas. And we have been trying to figure out how to reduce costs, because prices just keep going up. Electricity has risen as much as LP gas for high-capacity users. Tortilleros say the crisis did not start in 2018. Los aumentos en los energéticos. Energy price have impact everyone who provides a service or product. We are not lying. Esa es la realidad. The government has said the increase in prices stems from speculation and gratuitous pricing, but consumers disagree. Sí afecta todo esto. This is really affecting us. Gas prices are hurting us. Everything is too expensive. Antes. Gasoline has also risen in price by about 6.9%, according to the Mexican Association of Gasoline Entrepreneurs. The increase in food and energy prices since the start of 2017 has pushed the inflation indicators past the established limit set forth by the central bank. And they currently are at the highest level they've been for 16 years. Francisco Lincanao, one of the 11 Mampuchi activists being investigated in Chile for homicide, has fled to Bolivia seeking asylum from President Evo Morales. Despite her impending February court date, the Mapuche spiritual leader took advantage of her last month of freedom to petition for international intervention, denouncing the case as unjust. Lincanao and 10 Mapuche activists are under investigation for the double homicide of Werner Lutzinger and Vivian Mackay in 2013. And Bolivian President Evo Morales has asked medical unions to suspend the indefinite strike that has already lasted 43 days and caused the suspension of 800,000 medical consultations and more than 5,000 surgical procedures. Our correspondent Freddy Morales has more information. Bolivia still expects a decision by medical unions about the ongoing 43-day strike in public hospitals. President Evo Morales has accepted the request to revoke two legal amendments that, according to the doctors, criminalize their professional careers. Two amendments which would regulate and audit private health services have been annulled. 24 hours later, and the medical unions are still analyzing the decision to end the strike. In some cases, like the Medical School of La Paz, they decided to continue protesting to demand the annulment of the new criminal code and to sign an agreement with the government to solve various legal issues inside the health system. The government said that there are political interests behind the mobilizations and reminded medical unions that before the new criminal code was approved, it was discussed and analyzed for months by other unions, and now that they have listened and accepted all of their requests, there is no reason to continue with the strike. Sao Paulo begins the year waiting for privatization packages to come into effect following more neoliberal policies taken by City Hall and Michel Temer's de facto government. More in the next story. 2017 is gone, and with it, a wide-ranging package of public resources and services, which will now become private capital. The problem is that Major Doria didn't debate about the privatization package with the people and will give away the city's patrimony. This will increase costs for citizens when using parks or public institutions. This package of 57 different privatization measures includes markets, theaters, parks, the transportation user database, and even funeral service. Brazilians jumped from the 2016 Olympics to a 2017 fight against the privatization of Ibarapuera's gym, the biggest in the country. There are many athletes because many sports are played in here. Judo, swimming and other sports won many Olympic and Pan American medals. I am a foreigner, but I have been here for a long time and it would be a shame that something so important. The sale of this package is mandatory for the negotiation of the state's debt with the federal government of Michel Temer. But in Sao Paulo, 
positivo. Tinha dinheiro, só que ele fez. City Hall used to have money, but the mayor used freezing policies. In my opinion, this has an electoral use because he needs to have a lot of money in Sao Paulo to build stuff and to make works next year before the elections. It's clearly political. According to the polls of Datafolia, seven out of ten Brazilians reject privatizations. People are gathering signatures to get a popular plebiscite to debate privatization. There's only one way to avoid massive privatization in São Paulo, and that is to assume that public services and resources are ours, the collective property of the citizens and not of the mayor. There is a conflict about Michel Temer's government on a national scale. In 2018, he wants to do the same with companies like Electrobras, the biggest energy system in South America. And locally, the alliance between the federal government and the city hall may approve more privatization measures in Sao Paulo in a single year than all of them put together throughout the city's history. Musicians from Rio de Janeiro's top 15 samba schools have paraded along Copacabana Beach as they gear up for Rio's world-famous carnival. The event aimed at promoting tourism ahead of Rio's World Carnival that will begin on the 9th of February and run through until the 14th. The drum sections of each school, along with some samba dancers, participated in the first samba encounter and they performed with the Petrobras Symphonic Orchestra. It's a way of showing the whole audience what we do throughout the year and not only at the carnival. This year, the crisis has affected several schools. It's very complicated for several schools, but we have to have fun with joy and wait to see what will happen. And Trinidad and Tobago Carnival was launched on Friday at the Queen's Park Savannah. The chairman of the National Carnival Commission, Colin Lucas, says their goal is to make this a guaranteed addition to the calendars of tourists the world over. He says the commission had decided to reintroduce the Carnival Kings and Queens to the annual Calypso competition a controversial decision that could lead to the show being unmanageably long. Trinidad and Tobago Carnival takes place on the 12th and 13th of February. And Dominica is using its annual carnival in its post-Maria recovery. At the launch of Carnival 2018, organizers spoke of the benefit the festival will bring to the island economically and psychologically. CEO of Discover Dominica Authority, Colin Piper, says their focus is on promoting the island's nature, culture and adventure. These three events are in fact the cornerstone of our festival's tourism program. Like the nation on a whole and many other sectors, the tourism sector continues to rebuild post-Hurricane Maria. I'm pleased that the cultural industries can play their part in both allowing us to honor and celebrate our tradition while stimulating the economy and allowing those who do earn a living in the entertainment and cultural spheres the opportunity to do so. And we'll be back very soon, so stay with us. Welcome back. Let's have a look at some of the stories making headlines around the world. Carrying Iranian oil collided with a Chinese vessel and burst into flames on Saturday in the East China Sea. The vessel is still engulfed in flames and the Chinese official have said it is in danger of exploding. 32 crew members of the tanker are still missing. The tanker was sailing from Iran to South Korea carrying 136,000 tons of light oil. At least eight migrants have drowned and 272 have been rescued after a rubber dinghy sank off the coast of Libya. Dozens of others might still be missing. It is believed to be the first sinking of the migrant boat in the Mediterranean in 2018. In Syria, at least 23 people have been killed and many more injured after a large explosion in the rebel-held city of Idlib in northwestern Syria. The authorities said the rebel faction, the Ajnad al-Qaqas group, which includes hundreds of Asian fighters, have been fighting with the government forces since December. 
Hollywood's actresses and actors turned the red carpet black at the Golden Globes by their wear black protest against sexual harassment scandals brought to light by the downfall of disgraced Hollywood mogul Harvey Weinstein. Many voiced their concern at the event. So I want tonight to express gratitude to all the women who have endured years of abuse and assault because they, like my mother, had children to feed and bills to pay and dreams to pursue. Former president of Catalonia, Oriel Junqueras, will remain in prison in Brussels, complicating the formation of Catalonia's parliament and its new government. Our team in Barcelona tells us more. This is the wish tree for the jail separatist freedom. All day on Friday, citizens have gathered here in Barcelona to express their solidarity by hanging their messages of support. We want them to be back with their people and with us, and soon. What is happening is unimaginable. To have political prisoners in a so-called democratic Spain, and not to even have them in our own prisons, but in Madrid? We just want freedom for those unfairly arrested, but we have a government which doesn't listen to the Catalan people's request. The Supreme Tribunal has said that there is still risk of Junqueras committing actions against the unity of Spain. It refers to the independence leader's actions against the Spanish state by promoting a referendum and participating in the declaration of independence, which is considered a breach of the rule of law. Junqueras' lawyers hoped for a different result in the court. Apart from the reiteration risk, which exists just as a theory, because no one can relate this to real facts. Everything is just a speculation, and I think that the tribunal will be sensitive to the situation. After the elections of December 21st, separatists are now forced to negotiate to maintain the absolute majority they held on to. It will be difficult, but the Spanish state is supposed to accept the results. After the unpredictable actions of Madrid during the referendum, the separatists have their doubts, making the pro-independence Catalonians prepare creative solutions. If the members of the government who are in Brussels cannot come back and the ones in prison cannot be free, then the last resort for the separatists is to gather 68 deputies, or 70 this time, to make the majority in order to participate. While the people in Catalonia continue to call for the freedom of their leaders, the politicians are striving to build a new parliament ruled by separatists under a government headed by Puigdemont and Junqueras. If this majority cannot come into effect, then the Union Party has confirmed it is available to take control of the Catalan Chamber. And we've come to the end of this morning's news brief. For these and many other stories, you can find them on our website, telesiotv.net forward slash English. And join us on social media. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. But tell us your English. I'm Sony Gray. Thank you so much for watching.